Well, hello there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good whatever time of day you're watching this. Thank you for doing so. I'm Nelson, the founder of 360 Degree Ministries, where the love of Christ must come full circle. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm a little under the weather. There's a little everything going on right here in uh, Texas right now. And today we're kind of going with another one shot. And it's going to be more shooting from the hip, really. I know some of you guys are clamoring for a unit. I really ain't got it right now. But I still want to bring you guys some content. So uh, this week I've been kind of mulling over what I wanted to talk about. And uh, then I was reminded of something. That uh, an exchange uh, one uh, one of my close friends and I had. Uh, first of all, pardon me for being shaggy. I will fix that this weekend. Um, but one of exchange uh, my 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 friend and I had that. Um, it, it seems as if every time he mentions a mega church, he's over here like, I I, I know you don't want to hear this, but X Y Z mega church blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I, I felt like this video needed to address the issue of the mega church, but I'm not going to talk about mega churches directly per se. What I really want to talk about is: should the church be a business or should the church be a ministry? So, to do this, we're going to go to one little brief scripture, and then we're just going to talk. We're going to go to. Uh, Matthew chapter 16. I think y'all know where I'm going. I do. I, I've, I've done this so much in the past. I've done this so much in the past. So much, so much in the past. But we not we not even we not even going to be in the scripture that long this week. So going Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, and the scripture is as follows. And I tell you. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But, but, okay, so I know some of y'all sitting there like, well, okay, well, we know that when y'all, you use it all the time. What does that mean? Well, I mean, it means the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But what is the, well, what is the gates of hell not prevail? I mean, what does that even mean? It means that the collective group needs to have the abiding power. That deep abiding power, that John 14, 15 abiding power. Now, now, what does that look like? Well, I would say not every church model is the same. This is not every. First of all, this is what the this is what the the institution of the church is supposed to look like as a whole collectively. But 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 your old 79 feet Baptist church or your old missionary Baptist church or your tabernacle church or whatever, whatever you want to call your church. It first needs to embody that. But. Beyond that, I mean, the God may have given a different leadership, a, a different vision to the leadership of that particular church versus the leadership of another particular church. I mean, but every church, uh, if you look at, you know, if you look in the book of Acts, every church should be serving the community that it's in because that's what the churches did. The, the early church of Philippi, Ephesus, all those guys, they served their community. So what I would say is to answer the question, directly should a church be a business or a ministry the answer is yes now not a business in that you know i'm clamoring for 501c3 or identify with 501c3 or identify with having pastor associate pastor just associate pastor the pastor of instruction pastor pat no you can't we can't get caught up in the title but the reason why i say business and ministry First of all, the primary ministry is take care. It's the it's the religion piece from James uh, one twenty seven, take care of widows and their affliction and and, and and orphans and keeping yourself unstained from the world. That is the essence of religion. So any church has to any church has to abide in that as well. But I would also say that God is a God of order, and every church has to have operations. Now you need we in a church. A, a given church would need it, all of its members to be to embody those things that I just talked about because um, you can't we can't the church can't go in the direction that God wants it to go in if the people not if the people don't have God in them like that like they supposed to so you follow the first Timothy three rules for uh, church leadership we've talked about that before I'm not going into that right now you go see come see me in the comments if you want to have a comp we want to have a talk about first Timothy three um but in orderliness we we can't just go flying by the cuff 
I mean, we're supposed to trust God first, but we have to trust God in a structured fashion. So, yes, the church should have an institutional church, a brick and mortar church, mortar, pardon me. A brick and mortar church should have some structure. It should have some business elements to it. It has to have order. So it has to have roles. You need some, you need, but everybody got to be on the same page. The, 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 the head pastor, the money person, the youth pastor, and all those folk or whatever, whatever God said for your brick and mortar building to do in that community, the people who are in charge of those particular parts and the, and the person God gave the vision to, they all, they all got to move in the same direction. They all got to move in the same direction. And just like the church model is the bride for Christ, the bridegroom, and it says, do not be unequally yoked. He can't be unequally yoked with the, with the staff, at the staff, the, the core staff at the church, because you have to, because you have to have business elements operating out of a ministerial model. And, and, and that can't happen if the people are not on the same page. So to address this whole, I mean, I said I wasn't going to address the mega mega church piece, but whatever. If you if if a church is the size of a mega church, whatever, then then that's if it, if it authentically got that way because of its impact in the community, so be it. But I would I would charge any of you watching this not to follow a pastor who identifies with having a mega church that identifies with having large members that intends to have super large members. It should be more about what God called the leadership to do as opposed to how many people are going to be called to do it. I mean, Jesus himself took 12 and changed the world. So if we keep that in mind, we should not be concerned with numbers. Just my little take next week. Maybe I'll have a, <clears throat> pardon me again. Uh, yeah off the cuff so off the cuff um but next week i'm not sure what we're gonna do next week it'll be something though hopefully i have another unit maybe maybe not i love each and every one of you and there's nothing you can do about it god bless you take care of yourselves take care of one another have a great weekend folks